uh, I had a similar situation in India a few years ago. Um, there was a big agriculture field with poor farmers and they were uh, really having a lot of problems with their harvest. And what they started to do, they started to sing to the seeds every year for a week before harvest. And what they noticed, and they did it together with a local university around New Delhi, they noticed that those seeds that really, that, that, that they use for singing were growing much better after year two. And after that, all the farmers started to sing. It was beautiful. <laughs> but the harvest was really fantastic. They had 30% more harvest. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So it's, it's a little bit in line with what you just said. You know, this can uh, kind of redefine uh, being a singer for your career. <laughs> you could be, you could be a, 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 a seed singer. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we were really surprised. And a crop crooner. The reason, yeah, the reason that they invited us is that they wanted to find out, can we measure it if it's biophotons? Can we, and because we could measure the light into the seeds. And for us, this was really interesting. And we really could see that there is a difference. Wow, that's incredible. So yeah. just for anyone who's not familiar with biophotons, actually biological organisms, including seeds and including humans, actually emit light. And it's very uh, difficult to detect uh, by conventional methods, but uh, Dolph was fortunate enough to um, uh, develop or uh, sort of, you know, like uh, build onto a system to detect these things and found that they are a sign of vitality and good health and that when there's a broader spectrum of biophotons and a larger number of biophotons, that those are indicators of vitality. Is that, is yep. that accurate, Dolph? Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, you can measure biophotons with extremely sensitive cameras and um, Normally, you measure the flicker, flickering of a candlelight on 20 mile difference. And then you measure the light of that candle. That is how sensitive you measure it. So that I guess they, it's, we didn't have technology data. like that for very long, probably. Uh, you collect the data and then you compare the data when it is healthy, but that is uh, how sensitive the cameras are, yes. And those, uh, those light forms, they became a language of vitality. And that is why for us, subtle energy became so important. Because you can see that the real life form is structured with that subtle energy. And it communicates with that subtle energy. And we could also see, and that is very interesting, Andrew, that if you put multiple seeds and you connect them to each other, that they talk to each other with light as well. Wow. Yes. So how, how does that, you saying like that, if one increases their, uh, you know, biophoton output that the neighboring ones uh, mirror that behavior? Yeah, and you could also see that if you put them in a sort certain form, and you can see that the form also emits, emits different light structures. And if you then take out the seed, then you can see that they restructure themselves and then you get a new communication. Wow. So do you, could this be a way that, that humans also communicate subtle things to each other? Like uh, the way that, for example, women may uh, synchronize their menstrual periods or other I things like that? Yes, I would not be surprised at all uh, that that is the case. So... For us, the subtle energy became much more important than the chemical energy forms that we see. Because what you, what I didn't expect at all, but it was for me really surprised that when, you, when it is spring and you put all the seeds into the soil, there is a whole orchestra working under your feet. And the beauty is that what we saw is that if you have this analemma water, then you get a fantastic piece of music. Because we could see that the light was flickering in all kinds of forms. 
So it had a huge effect when you, and that has to do with water. Water is the communicator between them. It's the highway. So the seeds could sing their song. So that that's amazing. So are you saying that the the biophoton signal is propagated through water? Yeah. We could we could measure it into the seeds. If you bring in different types of water, then you get different types of biophotons. Yes. Wow, quite amazing. And you know, so is this uh, you know, something that we if we have a backyard garden that it will make a big difference if we stir the water that we give to the plants? I can definitely recommend it to you. Because what we forget is that we also eat that light in our vegetables. We were starting this discussion with the importance of our intestine. And if you want to stay a healthy per person, you need the right bacteria and fungi in balance into your intestine then you are much, much more resistant against all kinds of diseases. And what we have seen is that if you really give this water to the right vegetables, then it builds up that resistance. So even the, the vegetables are uh, more resistant to, um, you know, poor environmental conditions or exposure to toxins or even uh, electromagnetic frequencies. Uh, absolutely. What we have uh, discussed this morning with our team of researchers is we even saw that if we gave plants the normal uh, fertilizer, the normal amount of fertilizer, that the plants without fertilizer did emit more light. So <laughs> the water is so critical because in one way or another, we block constantly in nature all kinds of, and then we put in fertilizers and chemicals. Right. Makes no sense. You must bring it in harmony. That's a completely different story. Well, the only fertilizer I would put on my garden is manure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but it's the normal one. That's yes, normal. absolutely. But that depends, for instance, take the manure of a cow, for instance. If the cow is constantly eating artificial vegetables or, or have been manipulated, then you get also a different effect on the soil as well. Absolutely, right. So what you need really is like um, your own kind of ecosystem, right, where you have the animals that are eating the same thing that you're eating, right, that you're growing, and then they're... Uh, their dung is fertilizing it, and you have this, uh, you know, really nice balance that yes. you keep the whole system clean. And like, uh, you know, someone like Joel Salatin, I don't know if you're familiar with him in the United States, he's really established that type of a farming system and that type of balance on his land. So it is definitely possible, but, you know, it it's always just follows the same adage of scientific experiments, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. <laughs>